today we are multiplying whole numbers and fractions again, but we're going to look at them with a slightly different lens. We're going to talk about scaling, and we're going to answer the questions, when multiplying a whole number by a fraction, does the size of the fraction affect the whole number? And what's scaling? Well, let's take a look at it this way. Here's a duh. If I want to multiply 12 times 1 half, I don't think you're going to be too shocked at the answer. Um, you're going to see that we're going to put our 12 over 1 here. 12 times 1 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And it's a duh because you already knew what half a 12 was. But what I want you to notice is that I multiplied and I got a smaller number. Why is that? Well, what this problem was asking you is, what's half a 12? Half a 12 is 6. Yeah, I multiplied, but I got smaller. Does that seem kind of random? Well, let's look at some more examples from your notebook. These three are in the left-hand column. Let's see what happens with each of them. Here I've got 2 times 1 third. Let's make life easy and go ahead and put this over 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. And yeah, 2 thirds is definitely smaller than 2 wholes. Again, I'm multiplying, but I'm getting a small number as my answer. That's strange. Okay, let's do it again. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 4 is 4. And I get 3 fourths, which again is less than the 3 wholes with which I started. One more time. 4 times 2 is 8. And 1 times 3 is 3. All right, I get 8 thirds. Let's fix that real quick. 3 into 8 goes twice. 2 times 3 is 6. I tried to get 2. I end up with 2 and 2 thirds, which, one more time, is smaller than the four holes I started out with. So if I wanted to answer the question, what effect does the fraction have on the whole number? Well, take a look at the, the fraction and then at our product. Um, each time, my number is decreasing. That's what I want to put in my notebook here. What effect does the fraction have on the whole number? It causes it to decrease. Because if a whole number is multiplied by a fraction with a value of less than 1, the product will be a smaller number. And we talked about this when we were doing area the other day. If I take something less than one time, I'm not taking the whole thing. So one more time, and this should be in your notebook in the bottom part. If a whole number is multiplied by a fraction with a value less than 1, I'm going to end up with a smaller number when I'm done, because I haven't taken it a whole time. So let's look at the flip side of that. Here's another duh. Let's look at 12 times 3 halves. Where well, you're going, wait a minute, 3 halves is improper. In fact, 3 halves is 1 and a half, right? So I should end up with an answer that's about one and a half times bigger than 12. Let's see what happens. 12 times 3 is 36, and 1 times 2 is 2, so I have 36 halves. And since we're improper, let's divide 36 by 2. Okay, 36 divided by 2 is 18. So I ended up with a number that was greater than 12. And in fact, it is 1 and a half times greater than 12, because half of 12 is 6. We already established that, and 12 plus 6 is 18. We're just going to take it to scaling in just a minute. But first, let's do some more examples in your notebook. All right, if I'm dealing with 2 times 4 thirds, 4 thirds is improper, I should end up with a number greater than 2. 2 times 4 is 8, 1 times 3 is 3, I've got 8 thirds, 2, 2 times 3 is 6, yep, 2 and 2 thirds. We've got 3 times 5 is 15, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now notice 5 halves is slightly bigger than 2, so I should end up with a number that's slightly bigger than twice 3. I 
get 7 and a half, which is slightly bigger than 2 times 3. Take a look at this one, 3 halves. Again, it's 1 and a half times bigger. So think for a second about what 1 and a half times 4 would be. Well, what's half of 4? 2, right? So I'm thinking my answer should be 6. Let's see what happens. 4 times 3 is 12. And 1 times 2 is 2. Yep, 12 divided by 2 is 6. I got a number 1 and a half times bigger than 4 because I multiplied it times 1 and a half. In this case, what effect did the fractions have on the whole number? Well, this time they increased, which leads us to if a whole number is multiplied by an improper fraction, the product will be bigger because of multiplying by a number that's bigger than 1. Get that in your notebook. It's kind of common sense. So what is scaling? Well, scaling is the idea that if I have something that I want to reduce by a certain amount, but without changing its proportion or changing what it actually is, I can multiply it by a fraction. Check out our map of what state? You got it, Alaska. I bet you still know what the capital is. But here's the thing. You know, because we've looked at it, that Alaska at actual size is almost as big as half the United States all by itself. And that cartographers or map makers don't typically put it on a map the size it really is because it skews how the map works and it's a pain in the tail to deal with. So what they often do is scale it down until it fits properly on the map. By scaling it down, it means that they take it and shrink it. In this case, I shrunk Alaska by one-fourth. So if I were to take Alaska here and multiply it times one-fourth, I get this Alaska. And believe it or not, I can prove it to you that it works. Because four of these would fit, ha-ha, on one of those. Okay? So we scale things. We can scale numbers, but we can also scale images. And we can even work the flip side of that. We can grow them, too. For example, here's an engineer working on a clay model of a Porsche 918 Spider. Obviously, when engineers are working on models to decide how they want to build a car, they don't want to use a life-size model. That would be nuts. So what they do is they build a smaller model out of clay, and when they feel like it's done and ready for production, they'll multiply all of the parts by the same fraction, the same improper fraction, until it's grown up to normal car size. So scaling is something that's often used in the real world. So today we've answered the questions. When multiplying a whole number by a fraction, does the size of the fraction matter? It always matters. And then what is scaling? Well, it's using larger or smaller fractions to increase or decrease the size of something a certain amount without changing what it actually is. All right, that gets it done. I will see you in the morning.